So Monster, which is 2023 movie by Hirokazu Koreeda, Japanese filmmaker whose CV includes can hits like Father Like Son, Shoplifters, which remember I loved, I Wish, which I loved, Broker, Our Little Sister. I mean, an extraordinary back catalogue. Rightly described as one of the sort of titans of modern humanist cinema, often cited alongside the Darden brothers, um, Ozu, Narusi De Sica. I mean, one of those people who, whenever you say, you know, Tahira Kao is a Koreeda film, you know that you're in the market for something which is going to have profound human truth. So this is written by Yuji Sakamoto, who won the best screenplay prize at Cannes. The film was also in competition for the Palm Door. It won the Queer Palm. It's dedicated to Ryuji Sakamoto, who was commissioned to do the score. And this was at the end of his life. He proved not to be well enough to do the whole score. What he did was he ended up doing two original uh, keyboard compositions. And then the director took songs from his album 12 and put them together to form a soundtrack, which actually works rather brilliantly. I was playing some you know, tr tracks from it, well, the two new compositions and some other tracks on, on Scala a few months ago. And it's, I mean, it is, it's terrific. So uh, Sakura Ando is sorry, who is a single mum whose young son, Minato, seems to be having problems at school. He becomes sullen. He locks himself in the bathroom, cuts off his own hair with a pair of scissors. He comes home from school with only one shoe. And she starts to think that he's being mistreated, and she starts to think that he's being mistreated by a teacher, Mr. Horry. And she goes to the school to confront them. And when she confronts them, they are very strange and uptight. They offer an apology, but they, the apology is offered in such a way as to make it seem completely insincere and also completely procedural. They just keep repeating, we apologize, the, 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 the system will be, will be fulfilled properly in the future. And then what she starts to discover is that rather than her son being the, the, the victim of, you know, of, of attacks by the teacher, that he is being accused of bullying another kid called Yori. Yet the two boys actually seem to be fond of each other. So what's up? And the film then engages in this kind of Rashomon style revisiting of events in which we go back and we see the same events from different points of view, from different angles. So we see the story from the teacher's point of view and there's indications in this that that the the young kid maybe he is a bully maybe he there maybe there is something you know fundamentally wrong with him and then we see it from the kid's point of view and each time you go back a different layer is revealed and each time our preconceptions are challenged and what the adults see and what the kids see are two very very different things and what the film starts to show us is this strangely intimate bond between the two kids at the center of the drama so here is a here is a clip. Obviously, this uh, the, the clip is in is in Japanese. We'll play it, and then I'll I'll tell you afterwards what's going on if if, you, if you're not w uh, watching the video clip. But essentially, it's a discussion between the two kids about what will happen to the future of the world and the universe, and how everything will be reborn. Here we go. <laughs> で、そうだね。So basically it's a discussion about how the universe will implode in on itself and all time will reverse and the dinosaurs will come back and everything will go back to a state of nothingness and then be reborn. And this sense of rebirthing kind of runs all the way through the film. Because of the, t the title Monster sort of implies we need to talk about Kevin because it's a story about a kid who maybe there's something really strange going on with him. If you look at any of uh, Hirokazu Koreeda's films, there's always this, this subtext about what what you see on the surface and what's actually true underneath it. So if you take a film like Shoplifters, you and I discussed this when Shoplifters came out. On the one hand, it's the story about a, you know a, a gang of criminals recruiting and indeed kidnapping kids, but actually it's not about that. It's a tale about families, and you know nobody knows was inspired by a real life tale of child abandonment. And what Hirokazu Koreeda is very good at is is looking at the way in which the world looks differently from children's eyes and from adult eyes. This is about 
in the same way as some of his previous films. It's about children finding their way in the world in the absence of adults. And that, again, is a theme that runs all the way through the, the director's films. When you start seeing it, when you start watching the film, you think this is going to be as like a dark psychological drama, and apparently, you know, particularly with that title. I mean, if anything, it's actually, it's a love story. It's a cautionary tale about how something can seem to be one thing, but complete, completely the opposite when you get close to it. And if there are monsters in the story, they're never the monsters that you think they are at the point when you start watching the film. There is a significant part of the drama that plays out in this abandoned rail car that the kids find, and they kind of make it their own sort of fantasy world. You know, people always, that thing, if you, if you had a childhood friend and you had a place in the woods that you would go to, like a den, or maybe somebody had a tree house or a shed, and it becomes the whole world. It becomes a place that, you know, you put up little bits of paper and it becomes your, there is a really sort of beautiful evocation of that. Wonderful performances by the two young kids. The music works really, really beautifully. And it is one of those films, as with all of Hirokazu Koreeda's stuff, that the more you watch it, the more you can, the more you find in it. And I do think he is, and I mean this as, the, as a great uh, compliment, a profoundly humanist director who understands the human condition. And you watch his films and you think, not only is it brilliant filmmaking, but you actually understand the world better as a result of it. So it's called Monster and the title is very deliberately misleading. But I think anyone who goes to see a Hirokazu Koreeda movie would sort of know that in advance. I think you would love it. I think you would absolutely love it. And when you say, this is just for clarification yeah. uh, here, uh, humanist director. Yes. You mean someone who understands the human condition. Is that, is that? Yes. But when I also, you say humanist director, is that what you're meaning? Yes. But I also mean it in terms of if there is a religion to the films, it is the, it is the religion of humanity. It is, um, there is a spirituality to all of his films, but it's not a spirituality that is that is tied to a specific religious belief. So yes, I'm using the word in a, you're, you're completely correct to pull me up on it because of course humanist has a very particular meaning, but I I do intend that uh, inference, yeah. No, I just, it, it is a fascinating word because, you know, the humanist society would, would say one thing and it means something else yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in the way you used it. So. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. But, I, in but fact, I I, my assumption it. was if a film is called Monster, it's always going to be. It's like Monsters, you know, <laughs> it's right, not yes. really about Monsters. It's, it's always about not them. About yeah. yeah, exactly. If a film is called Monster, it's almost certainly not about a monster or at least not the one you think it's about.